Good afternoon, everyone. Today is December the 30th. It's New Year's Eve Eve. How about that? It's nice to be with you once again in your homes to share our faith with you and to discuss the court of the king. So I just want to tell you how beautiful this is as a meditation for your family. Sometimes families come to me and say, Father, what, are we, what should we do during like the whole Christmas season? Or now that you made us aware of the octave of Christmas, that Christmas is celebrated eight days as Christmas Day. Some people didn't know that. And that's okay. Some people say, I think I heard of the octave of Christmas and the octave of Easter, but what is it? It's, it's Christmas Day eight times. Snapshot, snapshot, snapshot. It's eight shots of Christmas Day coming to us. Coming to us. It's not December 25th and it's all over. It's December 25th held. Day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six, day seven, day eight is January 1st. So it's right there. And then we go into the season up until the baptism of the Lord. So people say, what do we do? Like, uh, you, you tell us about that the mystery of the incarnation is just too much to be bottled up in one day, like a Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. It's true. It, it is too much to be bottled up in one day and a half, that you need time to digest it. Because you know why? Because all of us are running and running and shopping and wrapping and cooking and baking and going here and going there. And we want to say, hey, something happened here. I know we're doing all of this and that's nice. But that's extra. Did you kneel at the crib? Did you kneel at the manger? Did you kneel at the nativity? Whatever you call it. I call it crib a lot of times. I'm sure you heard me say that. I don't know, it's just a habit of mine. I, I call it the crib. Some people say the nativity. Some people say the manger. Did you take time to kneel at the nativity place? And did you look at the court of the king? And did you say to yourself, even in your prayer, Lord, I think I'm, you know, the shepherd. I think I gather people and I keep people in line. I make sure people don't run off and I get them back and I say, hey, come on back, come on back. Stay close to Jesus, don't, don't run off. You know, maybe you're the shepherd. That's what I wanna to talk to you about today. Look at this guy. Isn't he beautiful? What do you think of him? Don't you love him, Susan? He's beautiful. He is very beautiful. All the members of the court of the king are beautiful, Susan. All the members, or all the characters, because we're talking about a star, we're talking about animals, we're talking about shepherds. And I, I told you yesterday, if I remember, that we're not talking about this has to be gender appropriate to the person who's, who's meditating upon the virtue. No. I'll give you a prime example. When the kids are preparing for confirmation, they write reports and they study the person or the saint's name. So we had many girls who raised their hand in class and said, I'll say yes. They'll say, Father, I've been writing about St. Francis of Assisi. Can I take his name? I said, absolutely. The name in confirmation is very much a tribute to the virtues you want to live out. She goes, I know, Father, I love animals. And I know Francis did too. And I just want to take his name. I say, you take his name. It's fine. So the same thing with the court of the, the, court of the king. I mean, whether you're a a woman or a man, whether you're a boy or a girl, we're looking at virtues here, okay? And the shepherd is somebody who leads and guides and organizes things. So I think I'm, I'm like more of a shepherd. 
I like to I like to do that. I I have a knack for organization. I have a knack for gathering. I have a knack for calling people together. I have a knack for putting things in order. At least I think I do. I feel like I, I'm called to that. So out of the court of the king, I think I'm I think I'm a shepherd. And um, I want to carry sheep back who are hurt and put them on my shoulder and bring them back to the baby Jesus and to have our Lord bless them. Isn't it funny too? Because the word pastor means shepherd and shepherd is pastor. So it's a, it's a very nice, it's a nice combination on the word itself. And I think all of us, there you are, dear shepherd. I think all of us need to really reflect upon the court of the king and find out, especially this year. But I want you to do it and I want you to pray around the nativity scene every night. Even if you have a short prayer, you can find a short prayer in a prayer book, on an app of your phone, uh, on a holy card. You can find a short prayer for the nativity. Maybe even Susan will post one for you because she is excellent with all of this stuff. But anyway, she's gifted. Everybody here is gifted. Our whole staff, our parishioners were, were really blessed. This is a holy place. So I'm so glad that you're part of this parish. I'm so glad that I'm shepherding the parish or being the pastor of the parish. Uh, it's, a, it's a grace for me. So I wanted to talk to you about the fifth day of the octave was yesterday. Today is the sixth day of the octave, right? So we're almost ending the octave. So yesterday the gospel was about the presentation. And I said it's very important to think about the presentation because Mary and Joseph presented the child Jesus to the, in the temple to God, which they, they need to do and they did. And I, I think to ourselves, how do we present ourselves to the Lord? Of course, in baptism, our parents presented us, hopefully. And if you have any relatives or friends or grandchildren that have not been baptized or grandchildren that had a baby that have not had their baby baptized, would you please encourage them to have their baby baptized, please? Would you please ask them to register in their parish? Not to be afraid, just to do something that is right, good, and holy. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a good thing. Parents need to take responsibility at the onstart of their child's faith development. Why aren't they doing that? They really need to do that. And maybe you're the person, you're the person who may lead them as a good shepherd. Say, I'm going to talk to you after dinner. Okay, Grandma. I want to talk to you about your baby. Oh, what about, what about him? You have not had him baptized yet. And don't tell me that you're waiting for him to decide. Do you wait for him to des decide to change himself? Feed himself? Give him new clothes? Stay in a warm house? Why don't you give him a great gift of having him baptized? God blessed you with that child. Why don't you thank God in presenting your baby to the Lord and having him baptized? See, I think we need to speak up. Many times people say to me, oh, I don't want to get involved. I don't want to hurt anybody. Oh, I don't want to start any fights. That means that the greatest sin is silence. We don't say anything. If they choose not, uh, they choose to get upset with you or not to talk to you, it's them, it's not you. They have made that decision, not you. Now you say nicely, you don't have to be mean about it, but you have to speak about it. In fact, I have to do it soon. 
to someone in my family. Do you believe that? So it happens to all of us. All of us. I do not understand. I truly do not understand. But I'm trying to be patient. I'm trying to be patient with them so that I could approach them at the right time. At the right time. It's always good face to face, isn't it? I could always say on the phone or email, text. There's something about face to face that is very good. When you get the mother and the father together, right? That's always important. Well, how about we present ourselves to the Lord in many other ways at Mass, during prayer, during adoration. We present ourselves to the Eucharistic King. Boy, is that a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful, beautiful example of presenting ourselves to the Lord. Are you an adorer of the Blessed Sacrament? Have you registered to be a sub? Have you called Mary Catherine Boucher lately? We need you. We need you. We need adorers of the Blessed Sacrament. Now you'll be safe in our chapel. Everything is clean and everything is, of course, locked. When you get in, you shut the door and it locks behind you. You know what I mean? So you have no problem. But we need people who are going to be adorers. Because we have to have adorers of the Blessed Sacrament. We can't leave the Blessed Sacrament unattended. So maybe you want to pick an hour and say, Wednesday. Is Wednesday at 3 to 4 in the afternoon? Is that available? No, we have somebody already for that. Uh, what other hours do you have? We have Friday from 2 to 3. Or we have from 11 p.m. until midnight. So ask, ask, because we need to have a doors. Don't you want this to continue in our parish? Perpetual adoration? I do. But if everyone doesn't help, what are we going to do? We can't have it anymore. So I'm asking you for a big favor. Would you please, please find out what hours are available and would you please sign up? And if that hour is filled and that was the only hour you can do, would you please put your name in as a substitute? That's important. Somebody called today and they were sick. Yeah, they're cold. It's December, it's almost January. They did not want to come in and that's the right thing to do. No, 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 you don't come in. Go to the substitute list. Hey John, how are you? Yeah, it's, you know, we're just calling to see if you could uh, pop into the chapel. We have somebody with a common cold and they don't want to come in. Yeah, it's going to be today at, you know, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Okay, good. You'll take it? All right, thank you, John. And that's how simple it is. But we need people to do all that kind of stuff because then what would happen if we didn't have substitutes or scheduled adorers? We need somebody to, to be present to be present to Jesus. Right there, core ad core loquitur, heart speaking to heart. You know? So I think I, I think we need to really put an effort out there to get more doors. Because it's not good when there's blank spaces there. Because then it's really not perpetual adoration then. So, would you consider? Would you consider? Look at the bulletin. I hope you're reading the bulletin either online or you're taking a hard copy. 
Please don't tell me you're not reading the bulletin. Do you know how much work that, do you know how much work that bulletin is? Do you, I just want you to think for a minute. Look at all those pages. That's a lot of work. Okay, please read it because it's important. We want you to know. The, the, the thing that makes my heart ache is when people say, where was that? I said, it's been in the bulletin for four weeks. Oh, uh, okay. You mean you don't take a bulletin? You don't read it? You don't follow what's going on in the parish? So don't say, oh, I don't know. I don't know what the parish does. You should know what the parish does. It's your parish. I know you're proud of the parish. So spread the good news. I always said, remember when we didn't have the pandemic? I said, put it at the dentist's office, put it at the grocery store, leave it. Why not? People will pick it up. I know during the pandemic, you can't do that. No one's gonna pick it up because it's laying there. It's gonna be just trashed. But when we're back to normal, I think that's a good thing to do, don't you? Absolutely. So also present yourself for Holy Communion. I mentioned this at Mass many times, and I, I'm just going to mention to you at this reflection. When you go to communion, if you're receiving in the hand, please do not walk away with the host. Do you ever see people do that? In other words, they, they take the host and they start walking away without putting it in their mouth. So it's only by, you know, down the side aisle that they start putting it in their mouth. You're not allowed to walk and eat with the host. You have to step aside, take your bottom hand, pick the host up, receive communion at the altar, and then go. So if you are doing that by any chance, I'm sure you're not, but if you are, please stop doing that. That's really irreverent. It's not to be, you can't walk away with the host. I know that uh, Peggy Henson uh, followed someone down the side aisle and she said, would you please put the host in your mouth? The person was startled like, oh, oh okay. And I thought to myself, when, would, when did anybody ever tell you to walk away with the host and walk down the side aisle? Now, most people, if they don't put in their mouth at the altar, they're doing it like five or six steps afterwards, which is not permitted. It's always to present yourself to the Lord. So at the table of the Lord, you're presenting yourself to the Lord at the table of the Lord, the altar. And then you step aside so the next person could come up. You receive Holy Communion at the altar, right there. No, nothing in motion. Don't go in motion. Don't start walking. Stop, receive, and go. Presenting ourselves before the Lord, especially with the most blessed sacrament. Don't you agree? I think that's the most proper way. Just wanted to tell you guys all that because we're talking about the presentation of the Lord. We're talking about presenting ourselves to the Lord. We're talking about baptism, the sacraments. What does all that mean to us? Exactly what I'm telling you. That's what it all means to present ourselves to the Lord. So we focus on the shepherd. Nice guy, right? Gathers everybody, forms everyone together. Beautiful court of the king. Today is day six of the octave of Christmas. Christmas day, sixth time that we're celebrating Christmas day. God bless you everyone. Take care. Mm -hmm.